my name's Colin Samples. I'm from Lakeview, Oregon, born and raised there. I have grown up in theater since I was born. Um, my connection with it is my parents owned a movie theater for 24 years. It's the Aldrin Movie Theater. Um, it's located on the main street, so it's downtown of our town. The movie theater was built in 1940. At the time, there was three movie theaters um, in the town. There was one drive-in and two regular movie theaters. Um, since then, we still have all the original equipment on premises, so we still have the platter, we have the old projector, the old boiler, the old popcorn machine, which is super cool. My parents wanted to get into the restaurant business because that was my dad's background and they wanted to own their own businesses, so they just did a joint deal, had no experience in the movie theater business, and kind of just jumped into it, which in turn led to my brother and I growing up in the theater business. Um, in 2014, March of 2014, we closed our doors because of the switch to the new updated system that went all digital. So there was no longer 35 millimeter film and you could only run movies that were digital. I kind of found out that there was a lot of bad things going on with my parents' theater about three years ago. So I was in my first year of college. My parents called me and they just kind of said, you know, we want to give you a heads up. Um, we're probably going to close the theater in the next year. It's just we're not making money and we're really losing money and it's a lot of effort for us to keep going. You could compare it to losing your childhood home. Small towns thrive on the tourist industry when travelers are going through, whether it's staying the night or they're there for athletic competitions. And if they don't want to stay the night, would rather drive through the night. All the businesses around are losing, not just the theater business. I've always thought about maybe if the small theaters kind of banded together and had a website where it was like you listed all the regions and you could see like all the old movie theaters that are still in use there and you can say like what's the history of them when was it built if they're still playing current movies or if they've turned into shows just because the small theater business is a lot different than the big theater business such as amc and regal they have the money they have the backing whereas small business they have themselves they have the owners um, and I think if you wanted to keep building is you kind of would have to not necessarily work together but share your tips and kind of promote each other. I mean it's cross promotion. If I went and saw a movie in Albany and I was going to Lakeview and they were like, oh yeah, there's a small movie theater there, you should check it out, I would probably go check it out but if no one told me I would never look for it. There's just something about not the camaraderie but the community that's there and the people who are really interested in it and the ones who love the theater business and love just going and talking to people that just really keeps you going back and makes you feel like you're at home. And even though the theater wasn't my home, it, it virtually was. Um, so yeah, it's, it's tough, it's difficult. It's something that I wish that when I bring people back home is I could still have it and have it running just because to tell the stories and see it in its heyday would be cool. My name is Steve Swanson. I live in Springfield now, but I grew up in Roseburg, Oregon. Essentially, my, my passion for theater started in 1997. The Starlight Drive-In Theater down in Roseburg closed on a week's notice. And I didn't go, I was living here in, at the time, so I didn't go down that last chance to see the theaters. Um, one thing led to another, and by 2000, I was ready to make the next step in terms of going to these theaters and trying to document as many as I could. Curiosity, fascination, turned into an obsession. Uh, in, in terms of the general theaters that are, that are still open or still standing, a lot of them, I think, have historical significance. They were built to last. The theaters now, the, the, the biggest problem for them is they need to convert to digital to stay open as a movie theater. Unfortunately, the theaters um, either as a, as a multiplex corporation owned or independently owned, they don't qualify for your standard financing at a bank. They're, called, they're considered a high-risk investment. 
So you just can't go down. If you wanted to buy a theater, say, I want to buy this theater from, from Jane Smith. Well, the bank's going to say, <laughs> can't happen. You have to have a lot of capital to own a theater outright, uh, as, as well as have the $100,000 or so to convert from film to digital. And if you're a, taking over multiplex, four screens or five screens, that's going to be times five just to get all your screens going and, and staying viable. The Coliseum Theater in Tillamook, out on the coast, closed in January of 2014, and that was because the, the owner didn't want to convert to digital. He didn't want to spend the money. He closed it down for about eight months, and then around August, he had three interested parties wanting to buy the theater. He chose a family that lived in Tillamook, and again, they had the capital to buy the theater, maybe outright. They had the money to convert to digital. But on top of that, once they did their, their uh, renovations with their own money, the city, the Chamber of Commerce, chipped in another uh, $35,000. When, when the city can chip in or Chamber of Commerce, someone that has the, the ability to pull some strings to find the grant money for some of these theater owners is a, is a big help. I'm Louise Annette Burgess, and I'm one of the founding uh, members of the Whiteside Theater Foundation, a 501c3, all volunteer and nonprofit that runs this theater and owns this theater. So we were very excited. The Whiteside Theater Foundation was able to host our first um, film presentation, our movie presentation. It was a digital projection of The Wizard of Oz. Um, so it went really, really well. We had officially 503 people come out for our first show. And that is due in large part to an, um, the fact that the local newspaper picked up the story that we were posting our first film. And um, previous to their running a story, we had sold 150 tickets pre-sold. And then after they ran the story, I went to check the box office numbers this morning. It was over 350. <laughs> so in 24 hours, um, you can see they had about doubled our ticket sales um, in pre-sales. And then we sold a bunch at the door as well. So we were super excited. We were very fortunate to be gifted our projector. Um, it's a sixty to ninety thousand dollar retail value, uh, but we were gifted it by a local uh, company called Polycom. Um, it just happens on serendipity that one of our board members um, went to a vacation spot, the same vacation spot that somebody from Christie, uh, the corporation, was vacationing at, and we were also donated the. Uh, lens that will fit that projector for our throw for our theater. 
So we um, were gifted a, about six to eight thousand dollar lens. But we just are so grateful to all of our volunteers, and all, of course all of our donors and all of our members. And we couldn't do it without every single one of them. The resources are out there. You just know to you just need to know who to talk to. If I ever got into the theater business when I was older, I would definitely like an older movie theater, um, not the whole upgraded, all the fancy stuff, just because the quirks of an old movie theater, the old popcorn machines, the old signs, is even though it's not the greatest quality, it's an experience, and you can tell there's a lot of history in those type of places. And I think it's so interesting, even if it doesn't necessarily bring money to the owners, to just have that lifestyle and to have that extra thing and be like, yeah, this is really cool that I own it. I would love to do that eventually. I'm involved in historic theaters because I love them. I, um, when I was a little girl, probably about six or so, my dad was restoring the Strand Theater in Shreveport, Louisiana. And so I would hold the flashlight while he was rewiring different sections of the building. Um, and so for a long time, all I could see of this beautiful historic movie palace was just little tiny pieces of it. And then um, when they were nearing completion, then finally they were able to turn the power back on, which it just blew me away. And I fell in love with all things historic theater from then on. And I'm deeply passionate about them. <laughs>